marks the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And people from all over the nation are heading to Memphis to honor him. And that includes many people from Chicago. Eyewitness News anchor Cheryl Burton is there tonight with live coverage of the tributes there. Cheryl. Alan, organizers of MLK 50 are expecting tens of thousands to converge here on the Lorraine Motel where 50 years ago this week, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. He was here in Memphis as an instrument of justice, supporting the striking sanitation workers who were seeking fair wages and better working conditions after two workers were killed. Tonight, a celebration in song and music to honor and pay tribute to the survivors and soldiers of the sanitation workers in 1968. The site where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated has become infamous for the place where a dream died, but his life is commemorated through historic photos at what is now the National Civil Rights Museum. Today, the first African-American U.S. Attorney General, Eric Holder, toured a new exhibit, MLK 50, a legacy remembered. And this is what this average life expectancy what would have been. What average life expectancy would have been. We are in the presence of who I call, this is, he's in a small group of, of, of men and women, the, the second founding fathers. Holder met with the sister of the youngest victim, Larry Payne, during the uprising of the strike, supporting the sanitation workers on March 28th. Carolyn Payne was just 14 years old when she says her brother was killed by Memphis police. It still hurts so bad, you know, that Larry's life, where he's gone. The assassin's bullet not only struck down an apostle of nonviolence, but it also killed a mother of the movement. The owner of the Lorraine Motel, Lori Catherine Bailey, suffered an aneurysm that very moment Dr. King was killed. She died the same day Dr. King was laid to rest. Tonight, her daughter is reflecting on the impact five decades later. I know it was an unfortunate thing that happened. I'm sorry that it happened, but it did. So I don't think we need to let each other forget. The day before Dr. King was assassinated, he delivered the iconic mountaintop service speech. Tomorrow, we take you to the Mason Temple, where there will be a commemoration of that speech as well. Scheduled speakers will be his daughter, Dr. Bernice King, and also her brother, Martin Luther King III. That is the latest tonight from Memphis, Tennessee, at the National Civil Rights Museum. Cheryl Burton, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Alan, back to you in Chicago. All right, Cheryl, thanks for that live report. And Eyewitness News reporter Ravi Bachewell is also in Memphis covering the events this week. So look for more coverage, live coverage from Ravi and Cheryl tomorrow through Wednesday.